Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Wherever you are in this great, great world, we're going to talk about XRP. And now that the price of XRP moved a little bit again, people are talking about you becoming a millionaire in this next run. Expert says holding 10,000 XRP can make you a millionaire. And they're saying if we're following the 2017 run, that this is possible during this alt season. They're expecting XRP to reach $100. So of course, if you're holding 10,000 XRP, you would then be a millionaire. I want to keep it a little bit more conservative. I think $27 is going to be where we get to in alt season. If we go higher, great. But I think we're going to get to $100 once utility starts driving the price of XRP. Over 55% of banks embrace tokenization According to City Services, Evolution 2024 Disruption and Transformation in Financial Market Infrastructures. Now, the reason I wanted to mention this is because when I look through to the comments section, a lot of you are saying, just wait until Archax starts bringing that 30 to $50 trillion to the XRP ledger in real world assets. Now, what's holding our checks back? Regulations. Once we get clear regulations, tokenization will also pick up a lot of momentum. Until then, it's like we're still in the waiting process of becoming rich. Justin, Indonesian crypto exchange Indodax goes offline after a $22 million hack. Exchange investigating services suspended like i'm always telling you this can happen on any exchange at any time you don't leave your groceries at the grocery store don't leave your crypto at the exchanges no exchange is a hundred percent safe and i was talking about wallets the other day on x again and i want to clear a few things up First off, there's no, I have not seen any issues with Zoom, which is now Zomin Wallet. I also have a Bitfrost Wallet. I also have a Decent Wallet and a Ledger. The reason I have all these wallets is because I spread my crypto around amongst a couple of different wallets. Because we don't know what's going to happen with the wallets either going forward. I'm sure Decent is going to be fine. I'm sure Ledger is going to be fine. Zomin is going to be fine. But at some point when AML and, you know, anti-money laundering and know your customer hits the wallets, I'm sure some wallets will not meet regulations as well. Because there's going to be a time where you're spending directly from your wallet. That's why I see KYC and AML added inside wallets at some point but we're not even quite there yet but i wanted to clear up the fact that i see those as safe wallets i use them myself oh my god look at gensler's internal comments that the sec mistakenly posted publicly now i just want to point out one right here i strongly recommend that a sentence be placed here are somewhere in the first part of the speech to reassure markets that you are not making the speech because you think there is an imminent crisis. So does Gary Gensler also expect some sort of crisis to happen? You know, why else would that be there? You know, I think a lot of people see something big coming over the coming months. I know a lot of people are thinking there's going to be a lot of chaos after the election no matter who wins if trump's trump wins we're gonna have all kinds of riots if harris wins 
most likely we are going to have riots. A lot of people are expecting chaos either way. You know, I just wish people could get along, honestly. You know, the country's so divided that the slightest thing happens and all of a sudden, chaos erupts. Maybe we need to come together and then we could, we could take control on where we go forward. You know, the government has way too much control because we're way too divided. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler is currently being investigated by prominent Republican lawmakers, including representatives Jim Jordan, Patrick McHenry, and James Comer, for potential political bias in hiring practices. I'm sure that's happening as well. Most likely to get hired at the SEC, you have to be anti-crypto. Then Gary's like, okay, you're hired. Now let's go do a crypto crackdown. Because Gary just, he only works for the big banks and the corrupt politicians. He does not work for the American people. Now, over the next couple of things I'm going to talk about, I want to show you how innovation is pushing ahead like never before. So overcoming obstacles to widespread real-time payments adoption. So it looks like they're pushing forward with banking the unbanked, but this is also coming down to real-time payments. Upgrading to real-time rails is no easy feat, especially when banks face steep costs to overhaul their legacy payment systems. Additionally, many financial institutions worry that these newer systems are more susceptible to fraud. So that's what's holding the banks back still. That's why you need regulations before the banks are going to be ready to jump in with open arms for crypto. Financial institutions concerned about the cost and complexity of implementing real-time payment rails could benefit by partnering with third-party payment providers that can handle the difficult legwork. Like I said, financial institutions and banks aren't going to create their own system. They're going to outsource that to a third party, like Ripple. An additional stumbling block for greater real-time payments adoption is a false assumption by financial institutions that customers are not particularly interested in utilizing this technology. In fact, the biggest factor suppressing customer demand is that the banks themselves are not offering real-time payment solutions. Of course, the people want fast, cheap, and secure, but the banks don't offer it. That's why they go and look for other payment options, other payment apps. Visa aims for tenfold rise in Pakistani use of digital payments. This also comes from Blue Hawk Legend. So one thing I want to point out is that Visa is looking to bank the unbanked. Pakistan, with a population of 240 million, is home to one of the world's largest unbanked populations. Only 60% of its 137 million adult population or 83 million adults have a bank account based on central bank estimates. Visa is investing in building digital payment infrastructure in the country, aiming to make digital payments less costly and more manageable. You know why everybody's in a rush to bank the unbanked? Because once everybody has access to a bank account, that's when they will flip the switch. Microsoft makes Quantum Breakthrough plans commercial offering. Like I keep telling people, it's going to happen long before 2028. And we know that quantum computers can break Bitcoin. So is Bitcoin even going to have a run in 2028? And it looks like Microsoft is ready to go with this right now. Our goal is to empower governments and organizations to tackle scientifically and commercially relevant problems with today's most advanced computational solutions, 
from designing and predicting properties of chemicals and materials, exploring molecular interactions, simulating complex chemical reactions, and more. So they want to get this implemented inside of governments and commercial also. And once they get that, then all of a sudden, we, they will continue to push ahead. Technology does not slow down is what I'm telling you. And if Microsoft is pushing for this right now, most likely we will see quantum computing pick up so much adoption over the next couple of years. By 2028, I think IBM is right. You will have a desktop version of a quantum computer because you see how fast technology advances. First, it's an announcement, and then all of a sudden, it's everywhere. Mass adoption quickly happens. Breaking Ford, Toyota lead in blockchain innovations as uh, autonomous vehicles become reality. And again, you see the car companies pushing towards blockchain. This is going to continue to build more and more momentum over time as well. Because if Toyota and Ford get the upper hand on the competition, the competition will also push in this direction. But what I'm showing you here is this. Technology is not slowing down. We are pushing full steam ahead into the digital age. ARC just released a report on humanoid robots. If humanoid robots are able to operate at scale, they could generate $24 trillion in revenues. Having talked to dozens of Fortune 500 companies, the size of this market is incomprehensible. This is still going to continue to grow out as also. AI is going to steal a ton of jobs over the coming years. It's not going to create as many jobs as they keep trying to tell you. And a lot of people, this is your one shot to get rich before it happens. You got to get rich before AI takes your job. Because, you know, remember when it was only going to take like customer service jobs? Then all of a sudden we see AI advancing in healthcare. You see AI even arguing court battles. I just seen that like a year or so ago where an AI talked out a full court proceeding dealing with a DUI. So it's going to take jobs that we haven't even thought about yet. Sure, it's going to create some jobs, but where do you think that universal basic income is going to come from? AI creating revenue. There's going to be taxes, and that tax money is going to go to universal basic income. It's the same way people always said, Nobody wants universal basic income. People will line up for miles to get it. Same thing with cashless society. If people are incentive, given incentives to go cashless, they will go cashless. And it's like anything. The government gives out a few things for free, so adoption happens. But you got to get rich off of your XRP. You, this is your one shot in your lifetime to get generational wealth. You have to take this shot. The fourth industrial revolution's here. The fifth industrial revolution is rising at the same time, and they're colliding together. This has never happened before in history. You know what else never happened before? Retail beat the institutions to crypto. That's how big of an opportunity this actually is. You know, I see people complaining about the price of XRP instead of looking at the opportunity that's right there in front of them. All they got to do is invest in this cryptocurrency, sit back and wait to get rich. It's like you buy a winning ticket, but the lottery numbers aren't going to be announced until a future date. But you already know you got the winning ticket. We are getting rich in slow motion. And I'm always urging new people to get into XRP before it's too late. You know, I talk to normies all the time, people outside of crypto. And I'm like, look at this opportunity that you have here. 
You got to take this opportunity. You will regret it for the rest of your life. Think about the people you talk to about XRP. Over time, they're going to watch you get rich. And they're going to be like, man, I wish I would have listened to you. Hey, can you help me out? It's like you did help them out by telling them that this opportunity is here right now. But no, they don't want to tie their money up. They don't see the value in crypto. They think it's monopoly money until you're actually holding real dollars. But honestly, when it happens, a lot of people are going to be left with a lot of regret. Just be happy you're not going to be one of them. And until it happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.